Steve, let's go into the details of the envelopes and the LFOs. I know there's a lot of cool features in there that I want to share with the viewers. So. Great, yeah, we've got um, our modulators along here. I think we mentioned before in the previous chapter that we uh, have these mod source tiles along here that allow you to select which one you're viewing. So with our three envelopes here, mm -hmm. we have one, two, and three. One's a little special because it's hardwired to the amp of the voice that you're playing. Mm -hmm. So uh, what this means is it's the volume of the note that you're gonna hear, of course, but it also does determine the duration for which this note lasts, which is sort of a, a subtle point, but internally, once it's gotten to the end of the release stage, the voice is killed, so to speak. So just a little tidbit there. Basically, yeah. what you... I'm sorry to interject, but yeah. that's kind of important because I know some users might, get in, might come in here, have a lot of voices stacked on their oscillators and leave the release really long, which is like firing a lot of oscillators all at once. So um, some CPU considerations there, right? Yeah, absolutely. You can save CPU with a shorter release time on your envelope one for certain. And then there's other subtle times where it may be useful information uh, to know this stuff. I mean, you might be doing something wacky with effects, like you might have a long delay, um, and then you might have something like a, uh, oh, I don't know, say a filter that's being controlled by the LFO after this delay. Mm -hmm. And this LFO is going to stop once, the, once this final note has decayed to silence, mm -hmm. but so we'll hear this sort of modulation of this filter will go away. In fact, we should be able to hear this if I do enough feedback here. So we can hear, well, let's get um, get a little more delay mix and go crazy amount of feedback. Okay. Um, and then notice that this LFO, turn that down. Let's notice, notice the LFO is no longer moving mm -hmm. because I let go of the note and the note ended. Um, so I would have to hold down. Or with a long release, we're gonna have that happen. So in some instances, sort of a power user thing, you might not know. There's some instances where you may wanna do something like this, like have the curve go down to silence, but it still lasts for longer. Uh, cool, not to sidetrack the conversation, but something that I just wanted to, to point out there. Yeah, for sure. So I'm gonna go back to an init preset here. So we have our three envelopes. This one's always on volume. You can use it for other things as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have envelope two, which is sort of the one that I will tend to use first and foremost for using it as a mod source. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, envelope uh, three as well. Um, so you can see all three of these envelopes are showing here. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can kind of see where your other envelopes are in the background. There's a couple of zoom controls. Notice that there's a time domain down here at the bottom. And this time domain is uh, showing us seconds. We can see one second, two second, three seconds. Mm -hmm. We can zoom in and out over yeah. here on the right edge. So if you had something that you're doing really short, some kind of pluck, and you wanted to really get in there on a short amount of time, we can zoom in here and Be very see. accurate with the setting, yeah. Exactly. So we have that, as well as we have these number values here, so we can get pretty precise just by uh, shift click. We'll fine tune all controls in mm -hmm. Serum, so you can hold down shift as well and get a fine value in there. Uh, but if you wanted to see it, Zoomed in, you could do that, as well as it's a sort of lock button, which will automatically uh, normalize the view, you could say, mm -hmm. to uh, fit the envelope perfectly in that mm -hmm. time. So that's handy as well. So now when we change our envelope point, you can see that the envelope size isn't changing, but rather time is changing. Right. So that's another, that's another uh, handy feature potentially. Just yeah, so that you, way the release doesn't go off screen when you're doing editing and stuff like that. Doesn't go off screen and you never have to fiddle with zoom. It's just right. always gonna kinda lock you right there. Nice. Um, so that's that. Uh, so the, there's a couple subtleties in there. For instance, if you have an envelope which is unused, you'll no longer see it in the background. Like right now we don't see envelope three because it's not assigned to anything. Mm -hmm. We just see the blue, which is the one we're looking at, and the gray one in the background. That's right, which is the other of these two. I, I also like the uh, graphic representation of where you are along the envelope in real time. Uh, I thought that was a very nice touch. Yeah, thanks. I was just trying to add as much visual feedback as I could when making Serum. It was something that I felt is sort of a soft spot in some other sense. Really, to be able to see what you're hearing always helps you troubleshoot uh, when you're making a sound and it helps you sort of follow along mentally with what's going on. Can I play a sound so they can see that? Yeah. Nice. So you can see it, yeah, go down and hold at the sustain point there. Yeah, uh, select envelope one so that it's not in the background. There you go, very yeah. cool. So that's envelopes in a nutshell. There's not a lot more to say about them um, besides that we have these curve segments between each one, attack, uh, hold time, mm -hmm. and then of course it decays down to our sustain level. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have this just curve amount for, for how it happens. And so it's, it's just good to keep those in mind. Some people have had situations um, where they have this curve up at 100% 
and they're sort of like it's clicking, even though if I raise the envelope time, it's still clicking. And it's right. like, well, that's because you have this instantly jumping up. So right. you probably don't want a curve that's going to be 100% unless you want to click. Excellent. Walk us through the LFOs now. All right, so the LFOs can actually extend your envelopes in a sense if you want by going into envelope mode. Mm -hmm. And that's the, really the first thing I think to talk about with the LFO, okay. is that we have these three different modes of operation. And there's subtle difference really between them. Off is sort of your default mode. And this just means the LFO runs. It's, it's running at whatever rate it has and it's just doing its thing. So It's if, always running even though you don't hear, even though it's not assigned. Um, that's right. So from an init preset here, we can go to um, uh, drag envelope one, or LFO one, I'm sorry, to course pitch. Mm -hmm. And now if I start playing this note quickly, you can hear that the envelope is, the LFO is constantly cycling. And it's just doing its thing running. We're catching it at different points in that cycle. Sorry to, to make a chipmunk go over your talking. <laughs> but, but yeah, so it's constantly running and we can set the rate, of course, but sometimes you might want it to, to happen at the same point every time we press a note like you're trying to make a laser zap sound or um, something that's just repeatable. So we can use trig mode for that. And that's just going to start the LFO over. Exactly. So Very it's always cool. starting from the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this third mode, envelope mode, is like trig, but it will stop at the end of the cycle. Nice. So it's not going to loop back. What, what I like about that is you have the ability to create a lot of different shapes with, within the LFO. Um, square shapes, ramp shapes, and you can make it cycle through all those just one time. Yeah, so that way you can use the um, LFO like a advanced envelope, mm -hmm. right? We could do something that goes down and goes up, or it's called like a multi-segment envelope sometimes. Mm -hmm. So we can do that sort of a thing. Um, there's some hotkeys here. If we hold down Alt, we can snap to the grid segments, cool. or we set the grid size here if we want a different one. Nice, I didn't know that. So that's, that's nice for getting this stuff to really happen in a, in a rhythmic manner, right? Because we have a half note here, and so we could get stuff. That sort of makes rhythmic sense if we anchor all those. We can hold down Shift and get these flat segments where it'll add points for us to mm, give that's us... That's going to jump around, yeah. Yeah, so this is like a step sequencer, really. Mm -hmm. We're just, if we hold down Shift, we can draw any kind of step sequencer pattern we want. So this will sound like a classic computer talking... Mm -hmm. So we can do that sort of a thing. And then there's also some other shapes. If we control click here, we get a context menu, and we can pick some other shapes for this shift click function. You can see it says shift key function in gray, mm -hmm. and, and which one do we pick? Uh, so ramp down would be like sawtooth segments down. Which we may not want on pitch, but maybe <laughs> you do. I don't know you. Uh, laser fight. Um, so that's, that's that. Uh, and then saw up would be the opposite. Uh, and then you can see these other two options here, which appear when you are in uh, envelope mode. Mm -hmm. There's a start point and a loop back point. Mm -hmm. So a start point is going to is determine, it actually works in trig mode as well. It determines where is this LFO shape going to begin from. Mm -hmm. And so for instance, if I set it on this point, you can see that it puts a little S flag there, mm -hmm. and that's the start. So that means that the, when I hit a note, the LFO is going to begin there. Oh, if, since it's in envelope mode, it's not going to go back to the beginning. It's, right. yeah, it's going to just go to this end and hold. Got it. But if we wanted it to say then start looping this last step, we could control click and say set loop back point here. Mm -hmm. And now what's going to happen is it's going to play these four and then it's going to repeat this last one. Mm -hmm. Got it. Uh, so that can, be, that can be good fun as well. So those, that's the start point and the loop back point. We always get the start point uh, in, the, in the trig mode as well. There's a start point, but you can see when I switch to trig now, the loop pack point goes away because the trig mode just plays the entire thing. Exactly. So that's the three modes in a nutshell and the advanced features that you can do with selecting the context menu. And there's some other, there's some other features in here. We can drag and select multiple points. Oh, cool. Um, we can uh, even do some really funny relative selection, which gives you this rainbow of colors, which moves everything you can see relatively, kind nice. of pinches and stretches it around. Did you hold the modifier to select those? That's right. So I held down the command key, which is the control key on Windows. OK. Um, and that will allow you to do that multi-selection, which, you know, it's going to put things out of time, so to speak. So it's not good for rhythmic stuff, mm -hmm. but it can be great for sort of sound effecty stuff where you're going to have a whole bunch of fast events happen, and then it slows down and unwinds and stuff like that. Um, so let's uh, clear this all out. There's this folder button here, and some people have overlooked this, but this folder button, if you click it, you get these presets. Mm -hmm. So this is where we can pick some default shapes. If I want to just undo all of this stuff and get rid of it, I could just pick, say, for instance, flat, 
or the default as it comes up is this basic triangle shape. Mm -hmm. So we can pick that. Just like on the envelope, we have these curve points. Uh, we can hold down Alt and move all curve points at once. Nice. And uh, So that's where you would have your square shapes and your uh, uh, sine wave shapes and other types of shapes under the basic, right? Yeah, under basic we've got square, sine, triangle. Okay. And then I brought in some of the other LFO tool ones as well into Serum. So we've got these LFO side chain shapes, mm -hmm. um, which can simulate sort of that that pumping, ducking sound. Mm -hmm. um, so you'd want to probably apply that to volume, not pitch. Mm -hmm. um, so we could use that to sort of get that four in the floor pumping or whatever. Um, so those are the same ones, and you can actually import uh, shape files from LFO Tool or anything that you draw here. If you decide you want to reuse it in the future, you can save it with Save Shape, and it'll appear in this menu under User. I like it. Very cool. That's um, so. That's the shape menu. We talked about the grid size, which works in conjunction with Shift for steps, mm -hmm. or um, it works in conjunction with uh, the Alt key for snapping points. Mm -hmm. um, the so that's grid. The modes we went over, and so let's talk about this controls over here on the right. Mm -hmm. The rate control is, of course, sort of the main control of an LFO. This is how fast is thing, how fast is this going? In right. other words, what does this full distance from left to right represent in time? That's mm -hmm. what we're setting here. Right. So, so it's representing a bar now. Um, so I'm going to put this shape back to something basic, I think, and then so we have a bar time, and now we have these other two knobs, which are sort of like as if you had added an envelope to control the output of the LFO. So we have rise, which is how long does it take before the LFO starts getting to its maximum value, and delay, which is how long does it take before the LFO starts being audible. Mm. Uh, so if I make this rate really fast just to make it more obvious, mm -hmm. we can hear this really fast zapping happen. If I put the delay up, we'll hear that we won't hear any of that. We're just going to hear our note, and then the zapping will kick in after a half a bar. Got it. And then we can have this rise so that it's not a, an instant jump between waiting and hearing the full thing. We can have it gradually get to that point, say over a half a bar. So at the half bar, uh, at the half bar it'll begin, and then eventually it'll it'll be in a half bar increment. Yeah, I lowered it to quarter just to be faster, but yeah, that's it. Very cool. So those are those. And then the last one here is smooth, and the smooth um, can be very useful. I use it quite a bit more than I expected to, which is, is really handy, so if you have something that's doing whatever it's doing. It's a really fun way to, to modify how the LFO sounds mm -hmm. in real time, so it's sort of a way to sculpt the LFO sound. And that's how quickly it's jumping from one point to the next. You can almost imagine as you're turning the smooth up, these uh, go from square edges to more rounded edges, right? Exactly. It's sort of like doing this sort of a thing to them, smoothing them all out, right. all exactly like you said. Without having to draw each one in, you know? That's right. And so really useful, especially if you do something like this with steps and you're controlling, say, a filter cutoff. Yeah. And you don't want it to sound quite so jumpy, so I'm going to take this off pitch. And now we're just controlling filter. And I'm going to slow this down. Mm -hmm. You can hear how edgy it's jumping around when I have smooth at zero. Mm -hmm. And how kind of more funky it sounds and more gradual, as if you're more controlling a knob. It's a great example of that. So there's a few more power tricks I might as well just mention. Yeah, let's do it. You can alt drag an LFO to another LFO slot, and that's going to make a copy. So now we have LFO 1 and LFO 2 that have the same shape. So that's really useful if you want something you just like, oh, I like that, but I want it to be slightly different for this other parameter. It's mm -hmm. a really easy way to make a copy. Uh, just alt drag those, and it all, you can notice all knobs and all values got set. There's a few knobs here I overlooked, which I should mention. A few switches, rather. Mm -hmm. These BPM switch. A lot of toggles between the synced times, which we had before, like half bar, mm -hmm. or free times, like a, a frequency in hertz. Mm -hmm. And so this can be cool for when you want stuff that's more analog -y and off the beat. Mm -hmm. the, uh, and those can be modulated too, right? Can, can you modulate the rate based off an envelope or something else, right? Yeah, you can control this rate knob with, with say, an envelope. Just drag right to it like Perfect. that. Perfect. Yeah, right on. That. The uh, BPM switch, the Anchor switch really applies to the BPM mode. So if BPM is enabled, the anchor switch is determining whether or not the... It's a little hard to comprehend and hard, hard to explain as well, but it's pretty easy to hear. The, the idea is when we're anchored, we're always locking this BPM rate to the host clock. In other words, if I have a, a LFO, which is a bar long, when my song position is at 
halfway of a bar, we're always going to be right here at the LFO cycle, and B3, right in the right. halfway. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we're always anchored to the host song. It doesn't matter uh, what we've done with automating this rate. In other words, if I change this rate, if we are modulating this rate, like you mentioned with an envelope mm -hmm. or just by hand or whatever, you'll notice when anchor is on, it's going to jump around. Um, let me, I'm sorry, let me, let me do that to here. Uh, make a basic shape, like triangle. Note, notice how the position was jumping around there, and that was just to keep it perfectly on time. Mm -hmm. So that way, if we were making this sort of rhythm by changing the rate, um, it's always going to have our, our modulations never go like feel on the upbeats or yeah. feel like they're out of time. So that, that controls the actual uh, start point of the new value. It'll, when, it's, when it starts that new value that you've turned it to, it'll, it'll allow it to start on the grid. It's maintaining, it's repositioning our LFO playback position to stay synced to where that would be as if we had started at bar one with that time. Got it. That way we're always just on the beat Got no it. matter what we do here with moving this around. Got it. Um, so that's really when this matters the most is when we are doing something like that. I mean, the time. But yeah, sometimes, and, and, and you hear that in bass wobbles when they're going wah 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 wah. Yeah, know, and you know. sometimes exactly, and it's staying kind of anchored on the beat. But then there's other sorts of more loose types of those same sort of wobble things where you might actually want it uh, to feel more analogy and feel like you're really just controlling the rate faster and slower, and you don't want those jumped around interruptions. Mm. So that's what this is for with the the anchor off. You'll notice. Notice how the position is always staying in place. There's no mm -hmm. jumping of the position happening. Got it. But we might end up off the beat um, because we do this really momentarily, and then we go back slow, and now the bar cycle's not right. So it's a give and a take, but I felt that was an option that was worth putting in, sort of overlooked in some synths. And then these last two options, trip and dot, Again, also apply to whether BPM is enabled, mm -hmm. and BPM, and so this is whether or not we have triplet and dotted times mm -hmm. showing up in our LFO times. Yeah, a lot of times when I try to modulate that, in some sense, I end up on a triplet, and I don't want to hear the triplet. I want to go from uh, eighth note to a quarter note without the division in between. So, does that allow you to bypass that? In exactly that right. Yeah. So this, it's really choosing what this rate knob is going to do. So it will, it will, like you said, we could automate this and only be getting these perfect divisions, powers of two of the nice. uh, of the time domain. Uh, and then if we enable triplet or dot or both, then it's going to be adding those in, and you'll see the T up here there for a triplet time or a little dot up here for a dotted time. You're solving all my synth problems here. <laughs> <laughs> Glad I could help. Uh, so that is basically it for the LFO. I can't think of much more to talk about. There's some little hidden gems in there. Might as well drop for anyone who's been patient enough through this video and thinks they know everything. Let's do it. You can alt-drag the LFO up to the waveform, uh -oh. and it renders the LFO shape as a wave, so you can actually use that as an oscillator. That becomes a frame of uh, a cycle now, huh? Yeah, it becomes a cycle now. So it's just a cute little way that if you wanted to make something out of connecting the dots here mm -hmm. and turn that into an oscillator, it's sort of a bonus feature that, nice. that I didn't even put in the manual, uh, but I decided, uh, decided it should be worthwhile. And you actually need the latest version of Serum for that to uh, to function on all platforms and hosts because it wasn't something I, I uh, planned on including. And then I mentioned it, and then I realized it actually didn't work for everyone. So uh, I fixed that in 1.02. It'll work for everyone. Beautiful. So the, that's the envelopes and the LFOs. But while we're here, we might as well mention the Velo graph and Note graph really okay. quick. Yeah. Just because they're in this row. We have uh, Velo, which is, of course, velocity and, and, and of the notes, MIDI notes coming in. And you can assign that to anything, of course. So if we want velocity to change how loud the oscillator is, we just drag it in and set the depth. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have this graph. So if we want a sort of velocity curve, mm -hmm. uh, we can choose how it responds to low and high notes. I've added in something here, something here that I think is kind of useful, which is that it, it allows you to visualize your incoming and outgoing yes. velocity amounts. Um, so you can actually just look at your MIDI um, so you can see here I'm playing a lower velocity, a lower velocity, mm -hmm. and this helps you see, you might have this velocity in your riff up to here, and allows you to really see where you'd want to hone this in. Um, so a little visual indicator there. I like it. I haven't seen that before on any other sense that had that much control over the velocity curve, uh, multipoint like that. Right, great. And then the, the note graph is the same idea, but this is note number. So from low note to high note, you might decide you want a certain wavetable position or a certain sync mode to, to vary depending on uh, what notes being pressed on the keyboard. You can kind of do format shifty kind of stuff or try to cancel out that format T shift stuff uh, by using the note graph. So that works there as well. Um, and maybe just to round it out, uh, it would be the macro knobs. 
yeah, let's do it. The macro knobs just allow you to have, just like the modulation mod wheel could control parameters, uh, these are most popularly used to control multiple parameters at once. So you could drag the macro knob um, up to WT pause. You can see the name appears once I've made a connection showing you that it's being used. Uh, and I can drag it to something else, say make this warp mode for sync mm -hmm. up here. And now this one knob is going to control both of those parameters. Uh, so that can be a handy way to get uh, to get more than one thing happening. Um, of course, we have one wavetable now, so that we're right. not really hearing much happen there. Right. Um, but that can be a fun thing. You can drag that to a bunch of different controls and, and mm -hmm. have one can, knob control all of this. You can really morph the tone that way by affecting a lot of parameters at once. Very cool. Right, so that's the modulators in a nutshell. There's some bonus ones I think we touched on. You can use noise oscillator as a modulator source. You just have to select it as mm -hmm. there's no drag and drop tile. So there's a, a, you know, a few fun things here I definitely recommend experimenting with, and maybe we should go more in depth in another chapter on the chaos oscillators. Yeah, we'll do that here shortly. Great.